Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hi there YouTube, I'm Ben, I'm Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango and I'm here with part four of my building an all-star node and today we're going to be amending the tiny little CM108 sound card. This is one of the trickiest bits of the build but it's so rewarding when you do it and it all works in the end. Throughout today's video I'm going to be referring to this picture so I'm going to put it up on the screen at various points so that you know exactly which parts of the CM108 sound fob that I'm referring to and hopefully you'll be able to build your own. Don't forget I'm running a competition through the whole of this series so if you want to win either a ready-built all-star node or all of the bits and bobs that you need to build one do enter my competition at the end of this video. I hope you find this really helpful. Let's start with the build. So first things first, we'll want to get rid of whatever soldering iron tip we've got. It's always good when doing very fiddly soldering to have a brand new, very fine tip. Watch my first video if you want to hear my recommendation of which tip I would be using. It's less than a millimeter across and it's great for this. So get your CM108 sound fob and then remove the green and red inputs. So the green one is obviously what's used for uh, headphones and the red one is what is used for microphone input. Now I'm using a heat gun here, which is by far the easiest way to do it using about 400 degrees centigrade of heat. Uh, this will soon melt that solder and allow you to get the um, the, the two ports off that will reveal six different pins underneath but it is possible to do it with a soldering iron so don't worry if you've not got a heat gun just go really really easy on the soldering iron. I'm also removing that capacitor there that's bridging C1 and C2. The capacitor is actually labelled on the board as C2 and uh, you need to get rid of that. So this is me doing it with a soldering iron. It's a lot more fiddly and you've got to be really careful that you don't pull too hard and actually rip the tracks off the chip itself so go really easy really slow but it is possible as I've shown you there to do it although I would far prefer using a heat gun. Next you're going to remove two resistors that's R7 and R6 and uh, the easiest way to do that is with a soldering iron because the heat gun just sort of melts the whole lot together uh, so just a bit of pressure to pull those off with some tweezers and once you've got those two resistors off and out of the way then you're ready to start attaching some wires. So once you've got the two resistors, the capacitor and the two ports off, then you should end up with these 12 little pads that are left. And I've labelled them 1 to 12 on this little diagram because I'm going to be referring to them throughout. It's a really good idea to just uh, re-tin them, particularly if there's any that are, have lost a bit of solder along the way, just so that you've got everything ready to connect to these 12 pads. Next you need a bit of 30 gauge wire, put a bit of flux on the end and tin it well. Um, these 30 gauge wire is how you're going to attach things from the CM108 onto the different pads that you've just exposed by removing some components. So once you're confident that that 30 gauge wire is well tinned, you're going to apply it onto the CM108. Luckily the pins that we're going to use are right on the ends and so using this helpful diagram you should be able to see here me putting it onto uh, pin A I've called it. It's one of the pins on the CM108 and it's going to bend around here and go onto C2. That's where we removed capacitor and it's the pad on the right hand side as you look at it and that's the first amendment done. Next we're going to do exactly the same again from the CM108 on what I am calling pin B that's uh, sort of opposite uh, down at the bottom there. Again well tin 30 gauge wire just hold the soldering iron on for about a second lift it off again and then bring that over to pin 7 number 7 that you can see there on the diagram. Uh, again, lots of flux on this. Uh, this is the fiddly one. Uh, C, uh, you need a, a bit of a longer bit of wire. This is going to be for one of the LEDs that we put on uh, in a couple of videos time, but let's solder it on now, ready for that. It's a bit fiddly because the capacitors are in the way, but hopefully that's done it. And then what we're going to do is break some tracks. So the track between uh, pin 8 and 11 is currently connected, as I've just tested with my ammeter but actually by just scratching it out of the way what I'm trying to do is break the track between pin 8 and 11 and then I'll retest it and sure enough that's broken. Same again between pin 5 and pin 2 so that's the middle track again directly above the one we've just done and that's broken and then between pin number 
seven and pin number eight. Originally that would have been connected but just scraping there with a knife or a sharp object I'm just using uh, the probe from my ammeter that's sharp enough to do it and broken the track between pin seven and pin eight. Next up we need a resistor. This is a 10k resistor. I'm tinning the ends of it ready to put between pin number two and pin number three on my little diagram. So that's at the top there uh, and this 10k resistor goes across that. I think it's easier to use surface mount resistors but uh, normal resistors are absolutely fine for this. Opposite that um, I'm using a 1k resistor between pin 11 and pin 12 and then the slightly more fiddly one to do is another 10k resistor between pin 7 and pin 8. And the reason this is a bit fiddlier is that you've already got one of those wires on pin 7 and of course the danger is that once you start applying some heat to it uh, it soon comes off. But I think I've just about done that. So we've got a 10k between 7 and 8, a 10k between 2 and 3 and a 1k between 11 and 12. Next up we're using the transistor. Now as you look at the transistor's flat side from left to right you've got the emitter, the base and the collector. So the base is going on to pin number 8, the emitter on pin number 9 and the collector on pin number 5. Now there's quite a lot that's going to end up going on pin number 8 so try and be as neat as possible as you put the base on because we're going to put another bit of 30 gauge wire onto the middle pin, onto the Base. And then finally, four lengths of thin wire uh, in the colours of black, white, red and yellow. Tin the ends well and we are going to attach the black wire, which is the trans transmit onto pin number one. The yellow wire, which is receive onto pin 10. The red wire, which is the push to talk on to pin number five, that's the one with everything on. And finally the white wire, which is the COS, onto pin number two. And then by simply bundling them together and wrapping them with a little bit of cable tie, uh, they're ready to put in. So put your sound card in the Raspberry Pi and put the four wires that are bundled together round to about where the radio will go. That's what we'll be doing in our next video. And then the final two little red wires of 30 gauge wire are for the two LEDs, well two of the three LEDs that are going to go on the front of the node. So they're going to stay just there for now until we get to a couple of videos time. Well I hope you found that video really helpful. Thank you so much for watching the video here today. If you've liked this video click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and right at the end of this video there is a chance for you to enter a competition to win all of the bits that you need to build your very own all-star node. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ben. I'm 2 Echo Zero. Bravo Mike Tango. Off and clear. 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero. Bravo Mike Tango returning.